Hello, gorgeous queen. I am so excited to be starting this journey with you today. I'm Maggie Hollenbeck. I am an integrative counselor, coach, and healer. Uh, I have founded Tending the Soul, and this course, Waking the Queen, is my chance to, to dive in and to explore the qualities of the queen archetype uh, how that lives in our culture and how those qualities live inside of each of us and how, if we choose to, that we can be in relationship with them, make them conscious, bring them forward in our lives. So I think the first thing that I want to tell you right off the bat is that I do not create this course or come to this course as an expert about anything. I'm not here to sh tell you about yourself or to teach you how to do you. <laughs> um, I come to this as a facilitator and a guide for your own inner exploration. Um, so I have been a psychotherapist for almost 20 years and an energy healer. Um, I have also been a student and a practitioner of many different types of spirituality over the years and probably most prominently in my life, goddess spirituality, feminist, feminine uh, women's spirituality. And so I come to this exploration of the queen kind of from those, those two disciplines uh, simultaneously and, and integratively. Um, archetypes have been in the culture and, and in the sort of collective, the psychological collective for thousands of years. Um, and they, have, they took the shape of um, gods and goddesses, especially in uh, earlier times and in, in types of spirituality that had polytheistic um, sort of pantheons of gods and goddesses, right? So the Roman, the Greek, the Hindu, um, the Celtic, there are these, uh, <clears throat> these forms of spirituality that gave us lots of sort of um, places to cluster qualities, right? In, in, into an idea of, uh, of a particular set of qualities. So um, we have in, in different uh, types of spirituality, we have a, a God that represents hedonism, for instance, right? Um, Bacchus or uh, Dionysus, depending on Greek or Roman. We have uh, the uh, archetype of the uh, sort of uh, warrioress spirit, right? Um, and that has shown up in the goddess Athena, uh, Diana, again, Roman or, or um, Greek, and um, sort of uh, the idea of the qualities of mother, right? So that showed up as, as Demeter. Um, and, and so we have, so these archetypes have, um, have developed over years, <clears throat> I think, originally in that guise. And so that's where the, um, the spiritual piece comes in. And in the early 20th century, Carl Jung began to work with these um, and, and sort of develop them as psychological archetypes, right? Ways that each of these sets of qualities lives in the collective consciousness of humanity. And because each of these archetypes lives in the collective consciousness, they are actually available. They live in, inside all of us. They're available to all of us. And, uh, and so Jung put them more into the psychology realm. And so, so you know, it's, it's a way to, um, it's a way to highlight a certain I think of it almost like as an energetic imprint. I'm also an energy healer. And so I sort of think of it energetically too, right? And we'll be working with the queen over the, these next seven weeks from all these different realms, right? To really, to I think because it gives us lots of different access points, right? Into what, what 
what is available here for us. Um, so I want to give you a sense of what the qualities are that sort of uh, in embody the, the queen archetype. So we will be talking in this course about a certain set of qualities, right? When you think of a queen, I would guess that some of the things that you think about are, are power and um, sort of a royal stature, right? A regality. Um, and, you know, I think for a lot of us, we think of, I think of, you know, the queen, I think of queens, right? Imprints of that is like Queen Victoria or Queen Elizabeth or Elizabeth the first. And so there are, um, sorry, those are all, all British queens and, and there are queens all over the world. Um, but, you know, the idea of like being very rich, right? And having jewels and having, being sort of dripping with, uh, with material riches. Um, so I want, I, you know, I want to acknowledge that all of that is there. But when we, when I start to work with the queen as a spiritual archetype and as a psychological archetype, I want to go deeper than that, that surface construct, right? And really look at like the, the highest expression of queen, right? To me speaks to yes, power, but an inner power, right? An inner power that comes from self-understanding, from an integration of the parts of the self into a wholeness that creates that sense of empowerment, right? So I want to, you know, I want to sort of shift the way maybe that you think of the power of the queen, um, not so much a power over others, but a power from within, right? And what that creates. With power, as you know, comes responsibility, right? As they say, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think that that's very true in the highest expression of the queen. So in order for us to truly be in our power and to, um, and to be empowered no matter what's going on externally, which I think is also really important right now, right? Because there's so much sort of external chaos, but we still have access to this inner realm. So in order to be fully in our power, we, we have to sort of be in great personal responsibility, right? So that means responsibility for our uh, own nurturing and nourishment, responsible for our, uh, our inner life and making sure that our needs are being met. And then a, also a sacred responsibility to the realm that is ours. And we're going to talk about the different layers and sort of concentric circles of what that is, right? But if you think about your life, <clears throat> excuse me, and all of the people that are included in that, all of the resources that are included in that, um, whether that is a family unit, whether that is a business, whether that is a community, whether that is, whether you consider that to be the world, right? That coming into an expression of queen is about taking on a sacred responsibility to that realm, right? And then, and then doing whatever you have to do to manage that realm from that place of power and personal responsibility and sacred responsibility to your realm, which brings us into resource management, right? So internal and external resource management is a big part of a queen's job, right? When she, when she is responsible to her queendom, to her realm, she has uh, resources, she has abundance coming in, she has harvest coming in, and she has to manage those resources going back out to make sure that the realm has what it needs, right? So resource management, we're going to get into that as well with, with sort of the different concentric circles and what that means, right? Because when you think of personal resource management, 
management of your finances, management of your energy and your time. Um, that is so crucial. And if we take it out to the, like to the edge of that, we're also engaging in a, a really crucial conversation right now about the world's resources, right? And how we're managing those and how we are showing up in ways that allow our resources to be managed sustainably for the long term and to be managed in the best interest of the entire realm. So resource management has a lot of different ways that that shows up, right? Um, and speaking of all of these, these different pieces of the queen, there's an interesting shift that takes place once we start to come into relationship with the other, with, with another, right? And so we're going to be exploring intimate relationships, partnerships, and particularly um, in conversation, in relationship with uh, the king, right? So the queen is, is a very particular type of, of feminine energy. And, and you're going to hear this throughout the course. I do not mean man and woman when I'm talking masculine and feminine. The masculine and feminine energy lives inside all of us. And there is a, a dance of those energies that we play with all the time. Um, and playing with that dance of energies in intimate relationship actually draws out some, some different aspects of the queen than what gets drawn out when she is uh, ruling her realm, so to speak, right? So we're going to get into uh, the, the softening, the softer side of the queen archetype in relationship with her king, however that shows up, whether that's uh, a heterosexual or a homosexual or a pansexual or a gender fluid relationship, right? How the queen shows up with her king. Um, how the queen shows up with her uh, princes and princesses and how she goes about raising uh, not big princesses, not big princes, but kings and queens, right? Again, uh, not gender dependent, but that idea of really raising um, children who come into their power and responsibility as well. It's a really exciting conversation. And since I don't have children myself, we have uh, conversations with uh, some other women to, um, to enlighten that. So there's lots of different aspects of the queen that we get to play with over these next seven weeks, right? Um, and, and I will keep presencing us to these sort of guide, guiding lights that we can orient ourselves by. Um, inner power and integration, sacred responsibility to oneself and to one's realm, resource management, um, and, uh, and relationship, how that works. So the first uh, thing I'd like you to do this week is just to begin to get in touch with what it means to you to embody the queen right? What are some of the, what are some of the knee-jerk reactions you have to that idea? What are some of the uh, first thoughts that you have? And then when you go deeper, a little under the surface, what else is there? What would you most like to draw forth from the well of what the queen archetype has to offer? What would be most nourishing for you in, in this time and in general? And um, this week's meditation is really about uh, getting in touch with a sort of energetic imprint of the queen um, and drawing down her energy into your body um, to see how that feels when, when you consciously awaken the energy of the queen inside your own body. So uh, I hope you enjoy this week's meditation. Um, I will not be sharing a conversation this week, uh, so, so I want to like just sort of get you started. So, the, so this video and the meditation and um, and the worksheet with some questions for you to dive around in. Um, but going forward, I have these beautiful recorded conversations with women 
who uh, I, you know, invited into conversation because I feel like they've got something really valuable to share about some aspect of uh, of awakening the queen. And so um, in subsequent weeks, I will be sharing those as well and getting to introduce you to um, these women and to their work and to their contribution. So um, I'm really excited to see what happens here. And, uh, and I wanna thank you so much for taking this journey. And um, I will see you next week.